Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we're doing my Copa America Group A reactions. We got Argentina 2, Peru now. Now, I'll be completely honest and say this right now, guys. I wasn't really paying attention to this game because I knew that Peru were probably not going to get a result here. Now, I did see the goals from Argentina, and Argentina did deserve to win. And, guys, Peru, man, that's so awful. So awful, guys. Peru team has washed, I'm sorry to say. Six shots. One on target is crazy. And remember, this isn't even Argentina's uh, A team. This is Argentina's B team. I'm sorry. This is embarrassing. Peru did have a chance to right at the end to, you know, get a go consolation goal, but it wasn't to be. And, yeah, Peru were just awful. Simply abysmal. And, yeah, only one shot the first half. Second half, they did improve largely, but still, like, Peru, this is pathetic, man. And they're going to have to revamp this team. Like, you have to get rid of the old guys. You have to get rid of Paulo Guerrero. You have to get rid of Flores, La Padula. Peru needs a new, entirely new forwards because this forwards is just not good enough. I think the midfield-wise defense and goalkeeper is fine. I, um, it's obviously the crazy is that there's no Tapia. Tapia is one of the most influential players. He's incredibly important. I don't know why Tapia is not playing at I don't know why he uh, didn't even come, wasn't even playing this game, but in Peru were just washed. They are simply washed, and they, they need a new generation. They need new attackers to come through because the old guys are simply not in. And for Argentina, man, Latar Martinez, man. Latar Martinez in his first start scored a brace. Scored a brace. Beautiful goal, the first goal. Great, great goal there for the first goal. That Paredes missed the penalty there. Awful penalty. Uh, then uh, Martinez scores the end. So for, for Argentina, man, they look very complete. They look very solid. And um, I think for Canada, uh, for Peru, as I said, man, very, very disappointing for them. And for Latar Martinez, man, is he going to win the Golden Boot? Because right now, I believe he's on four goals. Four goals for Latar Martinez, guys. Latar is cooking, guys. Latar is cooking. And uh, Linus Colony has a huge dilemma. Do you start Latar or do you start June Alvarez? I feel like Alvarez is still better. But if Alvarez doesn't perform in the knockout stage, then maybe you got to give it to Latar. And RG obviously did it. Um, the, the fantastic win for them. And for Argentina, as I said, they officially topped the group at nine points, three out of three wins. And for Peru, as I said, very, very embarrassing. They didn't even score a single goal at the Copa America group stage. It is quite embarrassing. And guys, Peru has done really well in the Copa Americas, guys. I mean, this is a team that's made like semifinals the last two editions um, of the Copa America. So for Peru, as I said, man, they need some revamp. They need to change up and this I believe this is the first time Peru have got grouped in a long time, so it's 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 sad for Peru, man. Sad for all Peruvians. Next up is Canada versus Chile. Now this was the game I was actually really paying attention to, and this was a very interesting game. I honestly think the referee for this game was a bit questionable because there was a lot of fouls that were committed. Uh, Canada didn't get some of those fouls, uh, but ultimately at the end of the day, though. You can't, Chile can't use a referee as an excuse because Chile's attack is garbage. Chile's attack is horrendous. And all my Chileans watching this, the referee wasn't great, but it doesn't excuse the fact of how poor Chile was that first half because Chile were so poor that first half, so abysmal. And Canada were so good that first half. Obviously, I know people are going to bring up, oh, Chile went down to 10 men. And I understand that the red card did impact things. But I even still feel like even before the red, I, I I really do feel like Canada were the better team before the red card. I mean, look at the amount of shots right here. 18th minute of the game, Lauren there. 24th minute, Lauren. 10th minute, Cornelius. And Canada had like three shots already, whereas Chile had only one shot in the first uh, first 18 minutes. Obviously, the red card did change things because Wazo gets a second yellow card and it gets a straight. Once you get a second yellow, you're going to get sent off uh, for, a, a, for a foul there. And I believe Larella, Larrero won the um is the reason why uh, Chile went down at ten men. He actually um uh, bamboozled Suazo, and then obviously Chile had to make a defensive change. They had to sacrifice Osario, and it's just crazy to me. Why is Varga still playing? You should you should bench Varga. Varga's been awful. Osario got sacrificed, which is a shame because he's actually one of the most um uh, influent. He's one of the most talented players in Canada. That's a good chance in the first half. They could have scored some goals. Obviously, that Estakio's chance there, the 42nd minute, was a big save. Huge save there. And then, obviously, John the David there, 38th minute. Lauren, as well, Davis as well. But, yeah, Canada, man, just look good. Now, in the second half, though, Chile were playing really well the second half. Chile were actually creating a lot of good chances in the second half. 
and they were actually making Canada. Crapo had to make a lot of saves. This save right here at the end, Echeverry was a big, big save. Uh, Lynn SV was also big. Sanchez as well, 74th minute was a big save. Echeverry, you know. And I just think for Canada in particular, they had their chance. Obviously, they had the disallowed goal that was rightfully disallowed. Buchanan had the effort there, the 82nd minute. That was a big save from the keeper. Larera, 53rd. And yeah, so Canada, uh, Chile actually played really well the second half. They just weren't able to convert their chances. And Canada, on the other hand, defensively stayed very solid the second half. And Kreppel was man of the match. He made a lot of big saves, especially right at the end. Arias did have to make a double save, I believe, in the first half to keep Chile at bay. So it was kind of like a game of two halves where I thought Chile were actually pretty good the second half and Canada were pretty good the first half. So ultimately, the halves cancel each other out. And I think a draw is probably a fair result, which means that Canada advanced to quarterfinals and their debut tournament, which is insane. Only only two other teams have done that outside of CONCACAF, which is pretty insane, guys. I think El Salvador's won, and I believe Mexico's other team. So shout out to Canada, man, what they did. Jesse Marsh, man, fantastic achievement for them. And for the United States, man, it shows that we should have gone for Jesse Marsh. Jesse Marsh was there for the taking. The U.S. Federation decided to stick with Verhalter. And let's see how the USA does on Monday because, um, yeah, we might uh, it, it might be bad. But anyways, putting back to Canada here. For Canada, as I said, man, fantastic achievement for them. I thought Estakia was amazing. I thought uh, Johnston was incredible. Um, Bombito was amazing. But my only concern with Canada is the attack. The attack for Canada is so... Uh, so uh, they, they're they just not clinical. That's the problem in Canada. They just don't have the clinical edge. And for Chile, man, this is embarrassing. 107 years, you haven't scored a goal. This is the first time Chile haven't scored a goal in the group stage of a Copa America in a long time. And it amazes me that Ario started this game. Like, why is Brenton Diaz not starting? Brenton Diaz, in my opinion, is one of your best players. And I know people are going to bring up the fact that, oh, he doesn't speak English or he doesn't, sorry, he doesn't speak Spanish. For me, I understand that. But still, it doesn't make sense. And Pulgar, why is Pulgar not starting? Pulgar should be starting, man. Pulgar should be starting. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and yeah, Chile, as I said, man, I don't know why Bravo didn't start either. And yeah, Chile, their, their attack is horrendous. Their attack is really, really bad. And for uh, for Canada, as I said, man, congratulations to them. They're in the quarterfinals. And they're playing against, they'll, they'll most likely play against Venezuela, which should be a do, uh, should be interesting, guys. Can they get a result against Venezuela? Because. We've seen how good Venezuela have been defensively, so that will be interesting. Obviously, I'll do my uh, complete prediction stuff like that in a few days' time. Um, but yeah, man, so congratulations to Canada once again, man. And yeah, man, it's a great, great achievement. So please remember to like and subscribe, guys. And let me know your thoughts in the comments below, guys. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.